This is Mazen Kerala, Infectious Disease and Critical Care Medicine at Sanford Health System, Associate Professor at the University of North Dakota. This is a simplified presentation to the public uh, on how to protect self and others during COVID-19 pandemic. I will start by showing the epidemiologic curve of the pandemic without any intervention in the community to control transmission, the, the pandemic will start with the initiation phase before it gets to the acceleration phase where the number of cases will double uh, every four to five days and this is what's happening in most countries at this point. After that, the cases will reach the peak of the pandemic before they decline gradually to a limited level at the end of the pandemic in the declining phase. In any country, there is a capacity for the healthcare system. So let's say if this capacity at this level, we mean by the capacity is the ER visits, the ICU beds, ventilators, and everything related to the management of these severe cases. So those cases above this capacity will overwhelm the healthcare system and will have major impact on the outcome. We know now that we have at least 14% of the cases are severe cases, 5% are critical, ca critical cases, and the mortality associated with the disease is between 2 to 3%. The mortality may be variable from one country to another, and it may be different depending on the time within the outbreak uh, in a specific country. So because we don't need to overwhelm the healthcare system. We need to do interventions in the community, and those interventions are aimed to do the following. Number one, we need to delay the onset as much as possible. As you see, we like to flatten that epidemiologic curve. So number one, we delay the onset, decrease the acceleration, and decrease the peak to a level where it is lower than the capacity of the healthcare system. Also, we aim to prolong the pandemic as much as possible so we can spread those severe cases over time so our healthcare system will be able to manage those cases. So those are proactive measures that slow the spread of the disease and reduce the burden of the, on the healthcare uh, system. So without controlled transmission of the virus within the community, we're going to have a high mortality burden on the healthcare system and bad outcome. How the uh, virus is spread is well known now that it is through respiratory droplets. We get these droplets in, into our mucous membranes. When we uh, get in close with other people, those droplets are generated uh, by the infected person through the coughs or the sneezes. So that's why we need to keep a distance from other people so we don't get in close contact with these respiratory droplets. Another way we can get this virus is by touching surfaces that were uh, sneezed on or uh, coughed on by the infected person and contaminated with the virus. By touching these surfaces and then touching the face, mouth, eyes, or uh, nose, we, cont we contract the virus through this method. Also, if we get in close contact with the infected person by touching, uh, handshaking or hugging, we may contract the virus on our uh, uh, hands and then by touching the face, we'll get it into our mucous membranes and then down to the lower respiratory tract. We know now that every single case of COVID-19 can contaminate or infect uh, 2.5 cases around it. In comparison uh, to measles, uh, every single case of measles will uh, infect around 12 to 18 uh, people around it. You can see that COVID-19 is similar to influenza. Whatever is applied to the prevention of influenza may be applied to the prevention of COVID-19 too. We, we know that we have high-risk uh, individuals uh, uh, if they contracted the virus, uh, the, outcome, uh, the, the outcome will be much worse. Those are the old, uh, older people uh, above 65. Uh, mortality rate uh, for people above 80 years old is close to, eight, to 
So the uh, older the person is, the higher the mortality rate, and this increased mortality rate starts at age 60 or 65. Patients with chronic heart diseases, such as congestive heart failure, are uh, at higher risk of uh, higher mortality if they contract the virus. Similarly, patients with diabetes, hypertension, weakened immune systems, such as immunosuppressive agents or steroids, will have bad outcome. <clears throat> In addition, patients with different cancers, uh, if they contract the infection, they may have a bad outcome. We know now also that obesity may be associated with bad outcome. For that reason, it is very important to prevent the contraction of COVID-19 specifically among those patients who are at higher risk of uh, bad outcome. What we do is number one, wash hands frequently with soap and warm water. Washing hands should be for 20 seconds and we should cover all aspects of uh, the hands, the palms and the dorsum of the hands. Also, we should uh, make sure that we clean in between the fingers and under the nails Trimming the nails would be advisable also. If we don't find uh, soap of, uh, and water like we are in the mall or somewhere, uh, we use hand sanitizer as a backup. If we use hand sanitizer, it should contain at least, uh, at least 60% to 95% of alcohol. We need to cover coughs and sneezes to prevent uh, potential infection to the others if we by any chance are infected. And we need to avoid touching face with our unwashed hands, avoid touching eyes, nose, and, uh, and mouth. We should disinfect as much as possible, as often as possible, touched surfaces, frequently touched surfaces. And we can do that with any disinfectant available at, in the house that kills 99.9 .9, uh, of the bacteria. And here we're aiming against viruses. And then we'll talk about avoid contacts and gathering. We'll talk about the specific situation in the next two slides. Social distancing. We need to keep away from others who might be infected. So we need to avoid crowded places and closed, non-ventilated, uh, congested areas. Examples of this would be the worships, uh, worship uh, uh, places such as mosques and churches, theaters, cinemas, uh, any meetings with close contacts, uh, and uh, transportation methods, especially the subways, uh, especially if they are congested. Those surfaces can be contaminated and they are not uh, cleaned frequently. Eating outside, uh, going to restaurants, and uh, getting uh, cl into classes with, uh, at the universities or the schools. By keeping people at home, we decrease the chance that uh, this virus can be transmitted among people. The high touch surfaces that need to be cleaned frequently would include this only examples, uh, the light switches, uh, the phones, uh, faucets, uh, door handles, uh, keyboard and mouse, uh, and uh, bathroom, uh, and other uh, tables and side tables. As I said, those are only examples. So you can see what areas uh, that are commonly touched at, house, uh, at your house and clean them frequently. Examples outside the house, the door handles, and the uh, elevator bottoms. What are the symptoms of COVID-19? One of the three, it could be a combination. They come one after the other or in, uh, uh, at the same time. Fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Symptoms may take one to 14 days to appear after exposure to the infected case. So the incubation time is prolonged and there's a potential uh, transmission of the virus during this period also. What should I do if I get sick? Number one, stay home, except to get medical care. 
You don't need to be tested unless the symptoms are severe. You need to be isolated at home and sharing no objects with others. Utensils and uh, personal objects should be uh, kept for the use of the infected person only. You need to continue disinfecting commonly touched uh, surfaces and objects in, within the house. If you need to see a doctor, if the symptoms worsen, you need to call ahead of time to alert the office that you have cough, fever, or shortness of breath. So you don't need to go to the uh, clinic or to the urgent care, sit in the waiting room and start infecting others. It is advised that you, put a, you wear a, a face mask if you are sick. However, if you're not sick and you walk in the community, for whatever reason, it is okay not to put a mask at this point. Watch your symptoms very uh, carefully. If shortness of breath is getting worse, at that time, call your doctor. Continue to wash hands very frequently before and after uh, uh, touching anything and make sure that you isolate yourself from others within the house. Common shared rooms in the house should be well ventilated. Any person who's in close contact with that sick person should wear a mask too, in addition to washing hands before and after. Now we, ad we are advising to avoid non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen and similar medications. This is based on a warning from the Ministry of Health in France. Disease is more prolonged when uh, ibuprofen is taken. There is no vaccine at this point and there is no specific treatment except in clinical trials and off-label use in specific hospital and situations. Thank you very much for uh, listening to this and hope to see you again in next uh, uh, presentation. Thank you.